Thousands of demonstrators converged opposite the White House on Saturday to call for an end to Israeli military action in Gaza, part of a global day of action against the longest and deadliest war between Israel and Palestinians in 75 years. People held aloft signs questioning President Joe Biden's viability as a presidential candidate because of his staunch support for Israel in the nearly 100-day war against Hamas civil rights activists and family members of those killed in Gaza during the latest conflict demanded a ceasefire and that U.S. President Joe Biden and Congress end military funding and weapons transfers to Israel, nearly two-thirds of the 23,843 people killed during Israel's campaign in Gaza have been women and children, according to the health ministry in the Hamas-run territory. Israel declared war in response to Hamas' unprecedented cross-border attack on October 7 in which the Islamic militant group killed some 1,200 people, mostly civilians, and took 250 others hostage to IT was the deadliest attack in Israel's history and the deadliest for Jews since the Holocaust. I'm often asked what people can do to ease our suffering. And my answer remains the same. Do what you're doing now. Speak up. I call on my fellow Americans to not, demand, to not just demand, but force an immediate and permanent ceasefire. We demand that President Biden and the Congress to end military funding and weapon transfers to Israel that killed my family and all the other families. I want to capture the insanity of the moment. How low is the threshold? How low the barometer? That calling for a ceasefire is too much for some politicians and media commentators and people who claim to be for human rights with the backdrop of 10,000 murdered children. How low is the threshold of morality? That if with the backdrop of genocide, you have still not found it in your moral conscience to call for a ceasefire, you are heartless. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. 